Hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. This evening I will be drinking the third, the fourth, the third, ah, the third, the third in uh, Black, Black Raven Brewing's Core of Four series, the four elements of beer. This is their wit beer, which is celebrating and highlighting the wheat, sorry, wheat, the yeast, the yeast <laughs> in the beer. So the Core of Four series, I have, I know I've reviewed one and two. The water, no, you know what, it was four last, it was last year's four, I want to say, and this year's one. I don't remember if I've done two. I might have, but I can't recall. Anyways, apparently it's an annual cycle of Black Raven brews. Uh, Black Raven out of uh, the Seattle area of Washington. Um, Woodenville, Washington. And they are brews, they are beers that are specifically designed to highlight and focus on specific aspects of the core four ingredients of beer. That is malt, hops, yeast, and water. Uh, and they, as such, that you might say they focus on on simpler interpretations of each. <clears throat> so rather than some great, you know, adjunct heavy explosion of craziness, they want a beer that allows you to enjoy the specific aspect of that beer that this particular one is highlighting. Um, the most surprising one to me was the the water um, which was a very well you can watch the video it'll be up on one of these sides um, I'll try to remember to link it there really good delicious beers amazing tasty highly recommended that if you can find them you try them and you enjoy them I was looking for a, a beer um, that I could enjoy kind of a, a savoring beer in my fridge and frankly I'm Kind of towards the end of the summer the weather has been deliciously cool this week and um i still have mostly like lighter i have pilsners i have some ipas and such and i haven't and a few of the the oktoberfest that i've already reviewed uh, and then i saw that i still had this in the fridge and no it's not very old it was canned like two weeks ago uh on august 30th I want to say. I assume that's an eight. Um, so no, it's not not very old. Um, but I remember, so this is the third can of these I've had. And well, we'll just get into it. It is maybe not your typical savoring beer. When you think of a savoring beer, you're typically thinking of something heavier, uh, a stout, a porter, uh, something that stands on its own. And this is definitely a lighter take. If you're familiar with a wit beer, probably the most common wit beer to American macro minds would be um, Shock Top or um, Blue Moon, which are both Belgian wit beers in style. I mean, they're not actually produced in Belgium, obviously. Um, they are a wit beer. Wit means white, so it is white beer, which means it's going to be very light colored, but it's also a little bit hazy so it's not going to be a very clear very clean uh, beer they are ales so they are top fermenting yeasts um, that's what an ale is ale is top fermenting um, and being very lightly colored that means that there was very little roasting involved in the malts in fact most commonly these are produced using um, malted barley and unmalted wheat. So the wheat has not been toasted at all, which does mean that more of the sugars are still in their sugar state, carbohydrate state. They have not been toasted and burned to carbon and flavoring compounds, but they're also a lot more complicated, a lot more finicky to, to extract, to, to work with. Um, they haven't been partially broken down by the baking process by the roasting process prior to being malted prior to being turned into the mash um, so that's what they're dealing with and this in particular is 
It's Element 3 Yeast. It is brewed in collaboration with our friends at Imperial Yeast in Portland, Oregon. And there's it uh, supports a portion of all sales will be donated to Hopelink, which I'm not sure what that is. But cool, good for them. Um, Oregon, Northern Oregon has several Uh, breweries that focus on unique um, yeast styles. Ferment Brewing is another one that I've reviewed several several of their beers. So indeed you see it's definitely not filtered clear. I can't really see through it. I can see light through it but it's it's definitely um, opaque. But that's a really nice head on that. That came up really easy. Um, kind of lacy. It's definitely a, a, it's not super light body. Like you, you can still see, there's still stuff hanging up on the sides there. So it's maybe between medium, it's a medium light body beer, and you can smell it. If you haven't had a wit beer before, you will typically smell maybe some orange peel. Um, they typically have a, a they're typically going to have a spicy character to them, not because adjuncts have been added. And just for a refresher, an adjunct means anything besides malt, yeast, hops, and water. So it's anything besides those, that is an adjunct. So they're not throwing coriander or cinnamon sticks or something <laughs> into the, uh, the brew kettle while they're making this beer. But Belgian beers will have a spicy character as a result of the yeast, the grains, and the and the hops that are employed they're usually very lightly hopped so they don't have a they don't have a strong bitterness just a kind of a refreshing spicy bitterness um, but yeah I'm smelling all that just a really and you don't even have to get your nose in it like you can smell even outside there's not really much of a breeze I mean there's definitely some wind sorry for the airplanes Everybody's trying to get their last flights in before the fall comes in hard or flying home for the weekend, early weekend, whatever. Um, smells, that's right. So I'm just getting these smells like all over the place. It, there's not really a, a breeze out here, but I am outside, obviously. And this aroma is still just filling the area. And it's, it's, it's light and it's pleasant. There is definitely the maltiness. Um, there's a really subtle like orange peel or like citrus peel kind of note um, just really subtle um, definitely the coriander so that's coriander is the seed of the oh that's gonna bother me now cilantro 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 is coriander coriander is cilantro um, so kind of that that sweet herbaceousness that's quite quite just inviting and once you stick your nose into it, it's maybe almost a, like an animal cracker kind of smell. There's a real definite sweetness, which I would suppose would be the, the coriander. Like I was saying early, earlier, I was looking for a, a savoring beer to enjoy. And I got a big bottle of a Belgian double, but I want to drink that with somebody. Um, and I was thinking that the, just the layers and the nuance of this beer make it worth savoring. It is not a stand up and shout beer. It's, it's like a, a really delightful light wine almost um, it's not you know it's not fruit acidic sweetness it's it's mild it's kind of a round flavor um, got that kind of a not really a graham cracker but a, a sweet cracker so like an animal cracker kind of round sweetness and maltiness to it um, and there's this kind of interesting earthiness that grounds the beer and gives you really something to 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 ponder on your tongue as you're drinking it and I believe that is what the yeast brings to this particular beer and why it was chosen as the representative of the yeast for this year's Cora 4.
Mm. Vanilla. Like vanilla and cream. Yeah. Um, so, so animal crackers. Vanilla, which might be playing into that. Maybe a touch of, um, uh, like clementine. Like a, a sweet, uh, a sweet citrus. But without the acidity, without the ascorbic acid, um, without the vitamin C. And, um, so maybe like an older clementine kind of flavor. Um, and then this really kind of nice earthiness, light earthiness, like, like a green grass, not mowed, just like a, a green grass maybe, or, um, wildflowers in the fields kind of, kind of flavor. That's quite good. It's definitely worth saving. There's enough going on here, even though it is a typically and historically light beer, that doesn't mean that it is light on flavor. This beer packs a ton of very interesting flavors. And really, I mean, any respectable wit beer is going to be like this. Despite being light colored, it is going to have a substantial number of layers of delicious, approachable, um, interesting, sweet, spicy, malty, and then just a touch of earthiness from that yeast that are really, they work well with food, but they don't need food. Like I would, I would be careful pairing this with anything heavy. It would go very nicely with a salad or uh, some lighter, like maybe a goat cheese or something. Though it'd have to be a mild goat cheese. Um, mild things, it goes very well with mild things, but there's enough to it that it stands up on its own and makes a very, very nice savoring beer. especially out here on the porch and the summer. Anyways, this is Matthew. I've been chewing the brew. I'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs>